we're gonna do an alluring fragrance list, we gotta do an alluring song to start it off. What's up, fragrant world? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh production. My name is Justin Copeland. On this channel, Stay Fresh Productions, we do talk about all things dealing with fragrances, whether it be top 10 lists, recommendations, critical discussion topics about the industry and the community, all of the above. You're in the right place if you like that kind of content or have an interest. Please make sure you subscribe. That gets you a dedicated spot in the Fresh Squad. You become a squad member. You elevate your freshness to unprecedented heights. And it's really as simple as clicking that button. So we are talking about alluring fragrances. Now alluring, I'm using it in a very particular way. Although within that particular way, there is kind of a breadth of things that it encompasses. I'm kind of treating alluring a little bit different than sexy. They can be synonymous oftentimes, but the reason why I say that is because not all of these fragrances are what you would consider to be sexy because alluring can be a number of different things. I think fresh fragrances can often be quite alluring while they're not always the sexiest fragrances. I like my alluring scents to have body, to have depth to them, to have a nice trail that they leave. As I pass people, I want them to make people want to get close to me. And as I get close to people, I want them to get closer to me. That's what I want an alluring fragrance to do. It makes somebody say, mmm, or make somebody raise their eyebrows. There's a visceral response. You know it when you feel it, when you're allured by something, you just know it. It's kind of unspoken. It's hard to really put into words, just like fragrance can often be, which is what we do on this channel, trying to put it into words. So hopefully these 10 fragrances kind of explain what I'm talking about and you'll get a better idea of what I mean by alluring scents. I got quite a range here, so a little bit of something for everyone. So let's get right into it. Here at number 10, man, this is beautiful stuff. I'm not gonna talk much about this because I actually did a full review on it. This is Jet Black Reserve from Michael Malul, London. A beautiful, warm, spicy, ambery fragrance with woods. That's all I'm gonna say. If you wanna know more, check out the review. But what I will say is that this is alluring in the way that as people get close to me, they want to get closer. Again, that's all I'll say. You wanna know more, check out that review. But I will have a link and discount code down to Michael Muller London if you wanna check out any of their fragrances down below. Save 20% off. Up next, here at number nine, this is a fresh scent that you might not consider alluring. I put it at number nine because you know, this is kind of an older fragrance. It does have a little bit of a vintage feel. It's from the late 80s, early 90s, but it has so much depth to it that it's irresistible. I think when people catch it in the air during its dry down, phenomenal stuff. I talk about it a lot. This is Alfred's song, Ohm. Yes, it does smell a little dated, but there's so much going on here. It's kind of almost a fougere in a way. It is fresh and soapy and very aromatic, but there's some herbal touches in here, but there's a sweet creaminess in there. Again, when the scent catches the wind, alluring stuff in a different way, in a fresh way, in a way that makes people think like, man, that person is put together. Wow, I kind of want to figure out what's going on with them. That's what I think this can do. Very, very inexpensive as well, that's sung on. This next one, this is a new scent to my collection. I'm gonna respray this. These have been sitting a while. Man, this is good stuff. This may not be considered alluring by everyone, but again, I think it is alluring in a type of way that is a little bit more on the refined and elegant side of things. Again, not super sexy or sensual. That's not this fragrance. Wow, this is Cartier Declaration Parfum, a release from, I believe, 2018 or 19. Dang, this is so good. I think I like this even more than the original EDT, which is a phenomenal timeless scent. This takes that DNA, that very fresh, spicy, bitter orange with cardamom and leather, and it really boosts the leather. It boosts the cedar wood. It adds a little bit of a resinous quality, so it's a little sweet, a little sweeter, a little bit more rich. That has a freshness to it, has a spiciness to it, but the balsamic quality that fills out the scent, again, that makes it a little thicker as it fills the air around you as you've passed people dressed to the nines because that's how I would wear this fragrance. This is alluring stuff. This is going to get people asking about you. People are going to raise their eyebrows. Good Lord, this is affecting me right now. They're going to raise their eyebrows. You're going to hear some mmms and mmm and all kind of all that stuff. Really good stuff. 
beautiful scent. So glad to have it, very alluring. I don't think it's terribly expensive at the moment either, so check it out. Here at number seven, yet again, another fragrance that might be kind of hard to see how is this alluring, but when you smell it, again, it's that feeling. I smelled this and I just said, mm, what? This is Sartorial from Penhaligans. This is a barbershop scent done right with so much depth. I don't even remember everything that's in here, but it has this honey kind of feeling to it. It's like a honeyed sweetness, kind of thick and rich. It is still aromatic. It is still sweet and creamy and spicy, a little fresh, but that rich sweetness really catches people and pulls them in like a spider web. I'm gonna respray this again. This has been sitting a bit. I had these drying down for a while because I was doing other things while I was preparing for the vid. Damn, even at first spray, it's fresh, but it is incredible. This stuff hits you kind of in the realm of the Cartier, more of a posh, refined allure to it. But again, may not make people want to take your clothes off, but it'll make them at least want to get to know you more. This is wonderful. That is sartorial. All right, here number six, we're getting a little bit into sexy territory here, but this is still something I would wear on a night out and this is going to turn heads. It doesn't smell the most unique, but it also doesn't smell exactly like anything else. <sighs> this is good. This is from Scotch Porter. This is what I would call their party scent. This is Miami Duppy. The whole idea is that whatever happens in the evening when you're wearing this fragrance stays in the evening. This is a sweet, smoky scent. Oh my gosh. It has like a kind of a sweet, almost like toasted, roasted hazelnut kind of feel. Maybe some saffron in here, but it's also quite smoky. It's playful, but it's kind of mysterious in a way. I think the mystery, which is that smoky quality in here, is what makes it quite alluring. Instead of just in-your-face playful, this reminds me of fragrances which are like that, which is like Armani Code Profumo. You can actually kind of dress it up a bit, and it's simply alluring. I'm going to link to them down below. We do have a little discount with Scotch Porter. This is beautiful stuff. This is probably like 60 bucks before the discount. <sighs> lovely, lovely stuff. Okay, into the top five. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this scent is definitely unisex. I think it's even marketed that way. This is incredible stuff. If you like coconut, if you like vanilla, if you like sandalwood, like a creamy, smooth sandalwood, but a little dusty and woody, very much in the background, but mostly sweet, smooth, creamy. You got to try out Santal Complet from Fragrance Du Bois. As I said, I don't think alluring fragrances should scream at people. This is definitely not one of them. This does not last very long. I get maybe six hours on my skin, but it does leave a gorgeous trail. As you pass people, as it envelops them, they will turn and they will look at you in awe and wonder and ask you why the heck you smell so good. This is one that I think a lot of women would find very easy to wear. I think it is perfectly unisex. It's quite versatile. I, I feel like because it's kind of tropical, you could wear this to the beach. Maybe at night I wouldn't wear this in the heat of the day because it's not all that fresh, but it can also be very formal and very elegant. Either way, totally alluring. Check out Santal Complet. It is expensive, but I do recommend sampling it. I'll have links below. Here at number four. Oh man, once again, I'm gonna respray this. I, this is one of my favorite discoveries of last year. In addition to all the fragrances in this new collection from Tail Cabanel. This is lovely stuff. This is alluring stuff. This is called Ooh La La. I love the cap too. That red really gets your attention. Kind of like the scent. This is a very unique scent profile. This is based around hazelnut, orris, tobacco, tonka bean, sandalwood, some saffron in there. So it's mostly sweet, kind of creamy, but also a little bit powdery, but also kind of like a nutty smokiness from that hazelnut, a little leathery with the saffron. That muskiness comes out more as it dries. It is that musky nature mixed with the creamy sweetness that makes this so alluring. This is a unique fragrance. It's iris in a very interesting way, especially with that earthy tobacco. It's, God, and again, perfectly unisex. You can sample these fragrances pretty easily. They also have a beautiful 30 milliliter size, which you can 
Again, spend a little bit less and still get more than you need. If you're looking for a very unique, kind of sweet, creamy iris, but with like an earthy, leathery, musky backbone, ooh la la is a great way to go. Very alluring. At number three, man, I love this fragrance so, so much. Oud Galore, I've been talking about this a lot. This stuff still has my attention. I'm gonna put this on my hand right now. I just feel compelled. This is an Oud Rose combination mm. with spices in there. You do have cloves, you have some cinnamon, but that rose is pretty upfront. It's a little bit on the jammy side, but there is a freshness here. There is a little bit of geranium, which I think brings that touch of a minty freshness, very slight, that dark woody oud that's a little bit on the medicinal side of things. You do have a creamy, smooth sandalwood in here, and there's even a touch of a smokiness. It is just ultimately sweet, woody, smooth, kind of airy in a way, but it has a richness to it. It's a very romantic scent, but for that reason, it's also quite alluring. This is really gonna draw people in. Only elegant situations would I wear this. This is pure elegance, pure class in a bottle. If you wanna allure people with a nice wearable and accessible oud fragrance that is not cheap, so I do recommend sampling it, then check out Oud Galore from Chris Collins. At number two, this fragrance had to make the list. This is a phenomenal designer fragrance that is quite alluring, that is a little different from everything else that was coming out at the time and kind of everything that's come since in the designer market. Not a groundbreaking scent, but decidedly a little bit off the beaten path. And again, nothing new here. This is One Million Lucky from Paco Rabanne. There's something about this, even though it is quite sweet, honey, plum, another hazelnut fragrance here, but nice fresh aldehydes to make it a little bit welcoming. It dries to be quite musky and sweet. It's playful, but again, there's something about it that is put together. I think you can kind of dress this up a little bit, wear this on a night out. This is gonna get people saying the mmms and the eyes and maybe the lip licks and all that. This is beautiful stuff. You've heard me talk about it before. No surprise, affordable allure in a bottle. Check it out. Okay, here at number one, I don't typically do this. This fragrance was sent to me for review from the company. I wanted to include it in the list. I've been getting to know it and it has captivated me. I don't typically put fragrances I was sent at number one, even if I love it, just because I wanna be fair and not say they, you know, because they sent it to me, it's the best one. But this stuff, I gotta just be real and honest with you, this stuff has been capturing me. I'm just gonna show you the full presentation. This is coming from a company called Panouge, based in France. They have a brand new collection here. I'm not even gonna say the name of it. I'm just gonna let Google Voice say it. Go ahead, Google. Matière libre. Thank you. I'm not gonna butcher that because that is just offensive for me to try to say this. I've been trying to say it for weeks now. But this is, as you can see, it's called Absinthe Gaiac. I'm gonna show you this presentation because I think it is quite stunning and beautiful. So you open this box up, kind of like a coffin style. There's four fragrances in the collection. I'll be talking about the other three later. Beautiful artwork here. I believe this is perhaps the Artemisia plant where Absinthe comes from. And then I think we have maybe where Gaiac wood is. Again, as per the name, the bottle, this bottle, look at this. Look at this. I have never seen a base so thick. Not only that, if you look at it from the bottom, you can see it's like encased in glass. This thick glass. Anyway, it's heavy. This is substantial stuff. Now, what does this smell like? This is alluring to the max, but in a very unique way. Here's the sprayer, just to show you. Nice fine mist. I soaked this thing, wow. Okay, wow. Wow. Gosh, absinthe. I can never quite describe the scent of absinthe, but it, to me it is kind of this sharp, herbaceous booziness that's kind of on the fresh side of things, but it has this kind of rich, almost viscous quality. It's hard to describe for me, but it is mostly green and herbaceous, again, kind of sharp, but there's a beautiful ambery sweetness in here that kind of fills it out, but you're getting a lot of violet leaves. You got a little violet leaves, kind of like Fahrenheit from Dior. It has that kind of violet leaf metallic freshness, 
not quite so forward, does not smell anything like petrol, does not smell anything like Dior Fahrenheit, but you could tie them together with that note. A little bit of rose in here, even a little bit of nutmeg, so a touch of spice, but that Gaiac wood is a little smoky, but soft and beautiful. Overall, the scent profile is very saturated and round. It is a little green, but not all that green. It's, it has that kind of herbaceous quality. It's kind of sharp and boozy smelling. It is a little bit sweet, smooth, a little floral, and again, woody and smoky and warm. Very nice performance. Not the strongest scent, I would say, but it lasted on me a good eight plus hours. I could smell it around me the whole time. By no means beast mode, but it will leave a nice bubble in your vicinity the whole time it's on your skin. And I would say this is quite unisex. Maybe the most masculine of all the fragrances in the collection. Again, I'll talk about it later, but still quite unisex for everyone. And I haven't really smelled anything that smells quite like this. I think this is a stunning scent. That's why I'm putting it at number one. Again, it kind of trumped what I would normally do. I wanted to put it at number one because I'm loving it right now beautiful for the nighttime, elegant, but also can be casual. And again, very alluring. I truly believe that in a very unique way, this is not your run of the mill scent. This doesn't smell average, it's different. It may not appeal to everyone. So just keep that in mind. This I believe with the conversion, it's like 130 bucks, not bad at all. For what you get with this presentation, with the scent profile, with the performance, I think it's wonderful. More on this brand to come, but that is Absinthe Kayak. So those are some of my favorite alluring fragrances. Now I want to know, have you tried any of these? If you have, what do you think of them? I would love to know your favorite from this list, or at the very least, I would love to know what is your go-to alluring fragrance. One that you know you're going to put it on, you're going to get people turning their heads, you're going to get the ums and the ahs and the eyebrow raises and the what are you wearing, but maybe without words, the people giving that look, giving you the look up and down, all that stuff. People want to get closer, whatever it may be. Again, we can define it in a number of ways, but I want to know what one fragrance makes you feel like you're going to garner that kind of attention whenever you put it on. If you like the video, please like the video it means so much to me. It helps out with my visibility across YouTube. And once again, please elevate your freshness by joining the Fresh Squad if you made it this far. I feel like you already want to do that, so it's as easy as clicking that button and the deed is done. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.